let's come to the causal research. Okay, so the third type of research, which is research design, which is causal research. In a causal research, the variables are known. What I'm trying to establish is, I'm trying to establish a cause-effect relationship. Okay, what I'm trying to establish is that I know a few variables, say two variables or three variables or five variables, and I am trying to establish a cause-effect relationship between either two variables or among all four variables, okay, or two variables and a moderator, two variables and a mediator. These are the general causal research terms which are used. Uh, it is generally, what do we mean by, by causal research is uh, generally done through experimentation. So a causal research is when I have an experimentation of two groups, so I have to take two groups, I have to give them one variable, okay? And I have to see whether the variable, variable has an impact or an effect or an influence on them or not okay having said that whenever I list the research objective of a causal research okay so if I am if my research design is going to be a causal research design it has to be planned beforehand so if my research design is is causal research design and I know that I am going to do a cause effect relationship between these two variables my research objective will also say so so in chapter number one, when we set up a research objective, we will have to say that I am studying the impact of cigarettes on lung cancer. Okay, so I'll have to give this statement in the research objective. Also, even in this uh, research, this is also a conclusive research. Descriptive was conclusive, causal is conclusive. Even in this research, we use statistical tools but the statistical tools are a little different. For example, correlation and chi-square and regression. These are the tools we use in causal research. Further, when we are trying, this is when we are trying to study the cause effect between two factors. Okay, so if I am trying to study the impact of attitude on intention, uh, therapy on uh, depression, uh, GDP, on FDI of a country, I'm giving you all subject examples, uh, impact of COVID vaccine on an Indian, uh, the impact of a chemical, okay, on a particular organism, all these are cause effect relationships. They could be established through experimentation, okay, and they could also be uh, established through in in social uh, sciences we use uh, uh, co correlations regressions further when we have to uh, see the relationship between three four factors together we get into structural equational modeling okay same and uh, nowadays what is happening new is that there is a, a you know inferential sem so uh, we are not only going to use quantitative we use mixed methods Okay, so so in this causal research, uh, you will be you. It will primarily be, of course, causal or quantitative or the way it is. But a part of it becomes qualitative. Okay, so embedded part. I mean, the the qualitative part is small, quantitative part is big. Thus, overall, it's a causal research. But a part of qualitative is there. Thus, it becomes mixed research. So either you could do exclusively causal, or you could do a mixed research also if you have a causal design so uh, it's very clear it's a cause and effect relationship it is an experimentation of two groups for example cigarette causes lung cancer now which will the two groups be over here the two groups over here that we take in causal research and i think the science uh, participants would uh, people, participants from the science background will relate more to this because uh, experimentation is something and causality is something that is the major domain of their study. Okay, uh, in social science also we are using it. We are using it for many types of variables. We use it in economics, political science, sociology, psychology, uh, 
commerce, marketing, human research, uh, finance, economics, political science, in every field we are using causal research. This is the most famous type of research design uh, that is being studied nowadays. So most of the research papers that you see nowadays are either um, uh, exploratory, okay, so qualitative research has come up in a very big way now, and or they are causal. So, so most of the papers that you see uh, in social sciences in my domain that I see are working on structural equational modeling and that is the reason uh, if you remember I told you that the, the PhD student comes to me and says that forget the research objective forget the topic uh, just give me something in which I can do structural equational modeling so so he comes to us because of this fame of this technique of causal research uh, if, if, if I'm doing suppose I'm giving you an example if the research is on on cigarettes and impact on lung cancer uh, what will be my two experimental group my one group will be what I call the control group and here they will not uh, you know have an intake of cigarettes so the non-cigarette smokers become my control group what is a control group control group is the group to whom I don't introduce this variable whose cause I'm studying whose cause am I studying over here I'm studying the cause of cigarettes on lung cancer People could have lung cancer otherwise also. It's not necessary that it will happen through cigarettes. But my study says I want to study the impact of cigarettes on lung cancer. So I will have a set of people who will be called a control group to whom I will not introduce with this variable cigarettes. And I will see how many lung cancer cases are there from among them. Then I'll have a second group which is called an experimental group. To this group, to this set of people, and again in causal research also, uh, we have a very huge sample. So somewhere around 500, 1000, very huge sample because this is also conclusive research. And I have to generalize the findings. So yes, this also has a very huge sample size. So my second group will be the experimental group where I introduce that group to cigarettes and I see how much of lung cancer is caused. I will compare the, the event of lung cancer in both the groups and then finally conclude that the group which was in taking cigarette had more cases of lung cancer. Thus, the hypothesis, even in causal research, I told you there has to be a hypothesis. Thus, the hypothesis that cigarette causes lung cancer stands true, stands accepted. So this is the whole process of a causal research. You could do it in your domains also. Uh, for example, uh, I was studying this one research in uh, economics uh, where they said uh, that uh, knowledge about a, a, a country, okay, how well you know about the country and the FDI are related. So when you're getting into an international company, the knowledge you have about the business of that company and the foreign direct investment, they are both related. Okay, so this is a causal research from the economics domain. In sciences, of course, we very, very, it's, it's experimentation is the uh, research design in sciences and in social uh, sciences or, uh, or, or in commerce, in arts, in, in psychology, also, we are trying to and primarily, you know, we are using in social sciences, we are using to study behavior. Okay, so in marketing, we are saying that um, uh, the, the attitude of a person has an impact on purchase intention. In psychology, we are trying to study if therapy has an impact on stress. Uh, we are also trying to study if uh, yoga has an impact on stress. So these are the psychological causal research. So I've just given you an example from different domains so that you can relate. Okay. <clears throat> uh, this is a very simple example of, of uh, causal research. So uh, there was a research where uh, the, the distraction uh, caused and the uh, while while giving a paper so while you're given in, in an examination uh, the distracting sounds can they have an impact on your scores so this is a research which wanted to find that out so for doing so what it did is it set up a control group where they silently gave their paper of three hours the students gave a examination of three hours 
vis-a-vis that they had an experimental group where the students did give their paper but with a lot of noise distraction and the scores of these two groups so 500 control students 500 experimental students their average marks were compared a hypothesis was set that um, the the uh, distracting sounds will impact the score of students and uh, let me also tell you uh, how you set this hypothesis it is not that I set it on the basis of my feeling. Okay, so this is a very big problem that comes up with with uh, with uh, researchers. They go by feeling. I think, you know, if if the students are distracted with sound, their performance will decrease. You don't go by your thinking in causal research design. You when you set a hypothesis in causal research design, you go by past review of literature. So setting a hypothesis for a causal research is not that easy. You cannot just feel and say, okay, I think this will impact this. Because the research is full of uh, papers where sometimes that causality that you have taken between two variables is proven true. And sometimes that causality has been proven false. So if you are hypothesizing that this causality is true, you will have to support it with at least four authors from past literature review who say that, yes, the causality between these two is positive. If you say there is no causality, you will have to support it with four papers, four author papers where they say, yes, this causality is not true. So that has to be done. Okay, so you can't go by feel. So, you know, many a times uh, in, in my marketing domain also, I'm giving you, I'm, I'm just giving you these examples so that you know where you go right and wrong. And and these examples are not written in books. They are not there in Malotras. They are not there in uh, Kotaris. They are not there in Saunders and Lewis. This comes through practical experience and that is what I'm sharing with you. So, um, uh, most of my students, I'm into a management institute, so most of them work on uh, social media they say okay social media ma'am will impact the sales and I always give them this one notion I say says who so then they say ma'am I have a feeling ma'am it's obvious ma'am this happens I mean it is known they give me all sorts of sentences but what I tell them is don't give me these justifications don't give me these feelings don't tell me it happens don't tell me it is evident that it happens don't give me these statements just go back to research, search for authors who say this happens and only then will I believe you. So that is all you have to do in a causal research when you're doing your PhD or when you're writing a research paper. Nowadays what people are doing is uh, they are finding out relationships between two weird variables. So in my domain it is very very common to work on and that is what is the gap of the research also. So in my domain, you know, uh, attitude impacting purchase intention, motivation impacting purchase intention, personality impacting purchase intention, this has become very common. So when I have to write a research paper, I have to find out something new. So there is a research paper which I'm doing where I'm trying to find out if factors of storytelling impact the purchase intention. And the factors of storytelling that I'm studying is fun in storytelling, impact. There's another paper where I'm doing a causality of gamification. The, the, the game apps that brands have, okay, I'm trying to see if they have an impact on purchase intention. So then there are factors in gamification. For example, uh, in, in gamification, there are factors like, again, there, there's fun in gamification also. There are reward points in gamification, um, the attention span of gamification, the dynamics of a game, the mechanics of a game, the aesthetics of a game, and how they impact purchase intention. So nowadays there are, when you see research papers and you see good research papers, and uh, this is my advice to any PhD student on board also, please don't take common variables for causal research design take up something which is new. So lately I came across a variable where they said a uh, tight word impacts control in a consumer. And these are very different variables. Okay, self-control in consumers and tight word. Okay, so, so 
you know the moment you see the variable uh, there, there are other variables like frugality and self control in a consumer right so don't take the common causal variables they are going to lead you nowhere there are thousands of paper written on attitude and purchase intention it's going to take you nowhere the latest a grade paper that you see in reputed journals when you read that model you know it takes you time because you have to go back and see what does this variable mean because that variable is so bizarre and so new and because it is bizarre and because it is new the causality has never been studied and because it is bizarre and new and the causality has never been studied this becomes your research gap and you have to before doing a phd before even selecting a research design you have to find out a research gap these things are secondary what will be the research design what will be the data collection that is secondary you have to first find out a gap and if your research is repetitive generally what generally you know that that, that is what phd students or even researchers you know we all like to go the easy way we like to see the papers we are getting if we are getting too many papers well and good take that topic no we shouldn't be doing that we shouldn't be doing that we have to search a variable so that somebody when he he sees our research he should you know actually feel like an illiterate he should feel that okay okay this variable oh my god is there a variable called tight word is there a variable called frugality is there a variable called um, uh, aesthetics in game mechanics in game dynamics in game so you have to i mean you know initially they used to say that you make things simple for simple for people but in research if the editor find out the journal editor of an a grade journal finds out that your variables are too simple he's going to reject the paper so we better and and that is research you know if so many people have studied the cause effect of attitude and intention what new are you giving you're giving nothing new so that is about causal research design and how you apply it uh the causal research design might not be done uh, only in a bivariate form what do you mean by bivariate between two variables you could do it in a multivariate form also for example just look at um, the uh, methods of if if the research objective if the research objective is to study the impact of uh, factors reducing stress now this becomes a multivariate causal analysis Okay so why multivariate because i am seeing the impact of exercise on stress sleeping on stress listening to music on stress meditation on stress playing with a pet on stress so i am seeing the impact of five variables on stress thus it becomes a multivariate study a few of these variables in causal research might not be direct variables i could be taking them as as uh, moderators or mediators okay so when you get into a little more complicated statistical analysis you will find out that maybe sleeping has a direct impact on stress but music while sleeping could affect the direct relationship of sleeping and stress thus music becomes a moderator okay or a mediator so uh, you could find the direct impact of all these five variables on stress you could find the mediation or moderation impact of these variables on stress but whatever you find out in causal research should not have been done previously only then does a paper get published and only then do i find value in a phd research or else if you are doing something which is already done uh i mean the, for that matter for that matter if i take these five variables i mean it is already established that exercise impacts stress okay and and that too uh, negatively so the more the exercise the lesser the stress it is known that mediation impacts stress it is known that music and sleeping but playing with the pet does it impact stress and if there is a causal relationship between this there could be further managerial implication we always finish the paper with a managerial implication and the managerial implication over here would be that the the sale of pets would increase if i come out with a research saying that playing with a pet reduces your stress and i can prove it through statistical data of 500 to 1000 consumers then definitely the managerial implication of a causal research design would be 
that uh, people should start buying pets. People who are stressed, people who are in uh, nine to nine jobs, people who are in the uh, manufacturing industry, it's a very high stress level job. They should have a pet at home compulsorily. So the sale of pets will increase. Okay. Similarly, if my causal research says that uh, music impacts stress, the, the sale of music CDs will increase. So when you have any research, be it exploratory research design, be it descriptive research design, be it causal research design, whichever research design you have, and it shows an impact on say stress. I'm just giving an example. It gives an impact on say stress. After you find a causality, positive or negative, your hypothesis is supported or your hypothesis is rejected, whatever the case might be, you will have to write the, the managerial implication of this. Research is not just done for the heck of it. You have to give a managerial implication for this. So this is about causal research. This is an example of a research paper where causal research has been done.